Hi, this is Inform TV 100. Happy Black History Month. Today we're going to do uh, episode six of The Grift by Clay Kane, The Downward Spiral of Black Republicans from the Party of Lincoln to the Cult of Trump. Clay Kane. And the book is about grifters. And grifters is a person who will is a sellout. He's just uncaring. He just was a scammer. He'll just do anything for to be pro, have a proximity to power. He doesn't care about his community. He doesn't care any about anyone. He gets into politics to align himself with. He, he will align himself with anti-black people. He will totally uncaring about the community, about their needs. He is a grifter. A grifter, he's a scammer. He wants to scam for money and power. So by Clay Kane, the downward spiral of black Republicans from the party of Lincoln to the cult of Trump by Clay Kane. This is our number six uh, on episode on the grift. So where we left off uh, in the book, they, uh, Clay Kane was talking about uh, the difference between the black Republicans of early decades to the black Republicans now, the grifters. The early decades, the black Republicans, they cared about their community. They wanted to fight for their community. They cared about black people, unlike the black Republicans of today. They are from the party of Lincoln to the cult of Trump. So that is where we left off. And so we're going to, I'm going to start our reading. And uh, this first paragraph is a, a little bit as an overlap from the last reading that we, part of reading that we did just for continuity. And William Brooks, the third, the third black U.S. Senator from 1967 to 1979 has nothing in common with Senator Tim Scott. Former Oklahoma Congressman J.C. Watts, who served from 1995-2003, cannot be compared to Florida Congressman Byron Donalds. The latter advocated to overturning the 2020 election, which would have disenfranchised millions of black voters. There has been a tragic de-evolution of black Republicans. The grifters, among other things, provide cover for a political party with anti-blackness as a policy point. Black people can indeed be anti-black. Although operating differently from whites who are anti-black, anyone who holds the water for white supremacy is dangerous. If GOP politics were only a debate about tax cuts and big government and how robust social safety nets should be, that would be a separate issue. But that's not where Republicanism is today. This is the party that worships in the cult of Trump. Is Trump a cult figure? Two survivors from 1978 Jonestown Massacre under People's Temple leader Jim Jones told me so three months after, told me so, three months after the January 6, 2021 insurrection. In April 2021, Jonestown survivor Yolanda Williams said on my Sirius XM radio show, he, which is Donald Trump, is an impulsive liar, just like Jim Jones. He's a control freak just like Jim Jones. She added, his Jim Jones spirit was right inside of Donald Trump. Another survivor, Leslie Wagner Wilson, who lost her mother and brother in Jonestown said, what if there were social media in the time of the People's Temple? 
how much damage could Jim Jones have done? Wagner Wilson hypothesized if Jim Jones ordered his people to storm the U.S. Capitol, they would have followed his orders, explaining. That's how dedicated and loyal they were to Jim Jones, the same as Trump supporters. Yet there's a crucial difference. The followers of Jim Jones were victims and vulnerable people who were brainwashed. While Trump is a cult figure, figure, his followers are not brainwashed. They are willing participants, whether part of an insurrection or not, who condoned his behavior with a powerful tool, their vote. In Trump, they found their dear leader who spoke their language, a pattern that the GOP created over decades. Williams and Wagner Wilson pointed out a similar one-liner from Trump and Jones. In July 2020, Trump famously insisted, I've done more for Black people than anyone. Williams recalled when he said, I said, Jim Jones, that's what he said to us. Characteristically, the Trump cult also makes grandiose claims like another former NFL player, Jack Brewer, who said at the White House during Black History Month in 2022 that Trump was the first Black president. Brewer suddenly became a Republican in the Trump era. By August 2020, the short-time Republican was speaking at the Republican National Convention, days after he was charged with insider trading by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Black people in high places supporting white supremacy place our democracy in peril. As L. Ed Kilgore wrote for the New York Magazine, the more Black Republicans embrace the same candidate and, and causes as white racists, the more they become not just acceptable, but even preferable to other GOP candidates. For example, in 2020, Mark Robinson was campaigning to become the first Black Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina. The former factory, factory worker had gone viral on conservative media outlets for calling former First Lady Michelle Obama anti-American and stating that Black Democratic voters were slaves. He also attacked Black moviegoers for supporting the 2018 movie Black Panther. According to him, the character was created by an agnostic Jew and put to film by a satanic Marxist. Nevertheless, in the GOP primary, he was the only Black man in the race and won by a landslide. In November 2020, Robinson won the general election against Democrat Yvonne Holly, a Black woman and a four-term state representative for Raleigh's District 38 with 51% of the vote. An April 2022 survey revealed only 5% of Black registered voters approved of his performance. His support among Republicans have only increased their anti-abortion rhetoric, his fight against critical race theory, and the assertion that there is no systemic racism. This toxic formula gives Robinson a shot at being governor of North Carolina, and others are following his lead at all levels of government. Black Republican grifters appear to the constituency within the GOP who are eager to feel reassured they are not racist. Anyone who challenges their position, especially other Black people, is labeled the real racist for attacking independent thought. There is also planning within the GOP to grab male voters. This is Inform TV 100. We are reading the grip, the downward spiral of Black Republicans from the party of Lincoln to the cult of Trump by Clay Kane. Please hit the like button, the notification button, so you will be notified of the videos 
and please share this video. This is very important. These black Republicans who are anti-black, they are trying to do terrible things. They're trying to take rights away. And the things they are doing that affects all Americans. It is not just black people that's going to be affected. So I'm going to read on Steve Bannon, a former senior counselor to Trump who supported overturning the 2020 election, said at an event for Pennsylvania Republicans in November 2021, African-American males are also another central part of our coalition. And you wait, we're going to get 50% of that vote in 2022. And once we do that, we can govern for 100 years. 50% is implausible, but garnering just 25% of the black men in 2024 could reshape the electoral college. Black Republicans are another hope to bait black men. Many of them are debasing themselves on YouTube, hoping to be discovered and become the next Candace Owens. Black people are not a monolith but we must all be a monolith against white supremacy. With impending elections, there are political hacks savagely fighting for material gain as the country is tiptoeing closer to a dictatorship. Black voters, whether they are were majority Republican in the 1800s or overwhelmingly Democratic today, are the moral voice of the electorate. Black voters have rescued this democracy many times, but today the fight isn't to save democracy. It is to save humanity. There are bad faith actors solely fighting for brutal individualism and a power grab. If they were the 1800s, I'd be a Republican. It's 2024 and I vote Democrat, but my loyalty isn't to a party. I back the party that defends the most vulnerable and attempts to right past wrongs. The words and actions of today's black Republican grifters suggest their aim is the opposite. There is a cruelty to conspiring with the enemy to politically hurt your own. They cannot be ignored as harmless buffoons, especially when only one political party embraces and finances liars. Even when their con is front page news, they must be called out in their trying in these trying times with an unscrupulous Republican party, silence is complicity. In the pages ahead, their draw-dropping scandals, bombastic rhetoric, and histories of dastardly deeds will be examined. Studying these figures and the descent of Black Republicans allow us to expose the grip and emancipate our future. To quote Ida Wells, the right to right wrongs is the turn the light of truth upon. The next section, we're going to read a little bit about it. Uh, it's Douglas, chapter one. He was prominently the white man's president, entirely devoted to the welfare of white men. Frederick Douglass on and made that quote about the U.S. president. The first Republican president, April Lincoln, is considered one of the greatest presidents of American history. Scholars have built careers analyzing the legacy of the so-called great emancipator. The GOP often reminisces about returning to the good old days of the party of Lincoln. One of the most beloved Republicans in history. General Colin Powell said in 1995, I believe I can help the party of Lincoln move once again close to the spirit of Lincoln. Lincoln is valorized as a great beacon of freedom, but let's be clear, Abraham Lincoln was not an abolitionist, 
he was a stone cold politician without the black Republicans of that time. Black people may not have been free in 1865. This is, um, we're going to stop right here. I'm going to, as Chicago pastor, Reverend Otis Moss III said, Lincoln had a position, but Frederick Douglass had the power. This is Inform TV 100, and we are reading the Griff, the downward spiral of Black Republicans from the party of Lincoln to the cult of Trump by Clay King. Please get this book. It's very enlightening enlightening and we need to v-o-t-e we need to v-o-t